Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be going over the third cars passage in the sample test. So let's get right into it. If you like this breakdown, make sure to hit like and subscribe so that we can keep doing these breakdowns for you guys in the future. Okay, so I'm gonna kinda go through this passage and stop at every point that I would mentally make a stop while I was going through and kinda tell you guys like what I'm thinking of when I'm kinda cycling through in my brain. First, go down. It doesn't have a title, so we're just gonna roll with it. Um, in 1926, projectile points made of flint rock were discovered among the bones of extinct bison at a site near the town of Folsom, New Mexico. This find constituted the first record of human-made artifacts found in association with the bones of big game animals in the New World. Clearly, this was a society of hunters. So that's strong language there. Subsequent... Um, investigation showed that these ancient hunters, called the Folsom people by the archaeologists because of the location of the initial discovery, lived through the western plains and rocky mountains of what, have, of what are now the United States and Canada between about 10,900 and 10,400 years ago. Over 50 campsites have been found from southeastern Saskatchewan and Canada to northern Texas in the United States. These sites are the remains of the culture of the earliest Indians or Palo Indians. So I would pause right here for about five seconds to kind of mentally like summarize that in my head. So the summary I'm getting is they found this these flint projectiles in New Mexico it was evidence of Paleo Indians, and the Paleo Indians were hunters. In 1978, a new Folsom site was found in the San Luis Valley of the Colorado Rocky Mountains. What makes this site unusual is that the area now has many sand dunes, and wind erosion is continuously exposing new artifacts. So I like that they say what makes this site unusual. Obviously, they're going to kind of like zoom in on the site, tell me a little bit more about it, so we need to kind of pay attention here. This has enabled archaeologists to study a wide variety of pointed and other tools as well as skeletons of the hunters and their prey. Okay, I would pause here, kind of summarize, say, okay, we got these Paleo Indians, um, they're hunters, and then this new site in San Luis is uh, uncovering them quicker because of the sand that's there. An important conclusion, important, the strong language, from investigations at this site, as well as from comparisons to other Folsom hunter sites, is that each small population of hunters made tools out of materials that they gathered themselves. Okay. There was apparently little trading and no long distance movement made between the geographically separated bands of Paleo Indians. So this is an example of, um, you know, they will have questions on cars that are like, which of these is the you know, the argument that is supported the least or something. So you see how they said that each population of hunters uh, made tools out of the materials that they found themselves. And then they had a whole nother sentence that kind of said basically the same thing, that there was little trading and no long distance movement, yada, yada, yada. Um, that would be a well-supported argument. If it has two sentences, two plus sentences, then it is a well-supported argument um, by the AAMC standards. The San Luis site has projectiles made from high-quality flint, petrified wood, and quartzite, which are plentiful in the central and northern Rockies. Some of the rock sources for the tools appear to be at a distance of 50 miles or so north of the valley, indicating that the hunters moved into the valley, perhaps following herds of bison in the fall. So you see, even those two sentences were more evidence for that argument that they didn't do much trading and that uh, they made their tools out of nearby materials. So that is definitely going to be like a big argument, like a big column if you're doing the house method. Taking a second here. Okay, so we got this San Luis site that's helping the archaeologists kind of uncover these Paleo Indian stuff. And um, they were they were hunters and they were not gatherers and they made all their tools from nearby resources. That's where we are right now. During the period when the Folsom people occupied the site, the climate was different from what it is now. There were numerous lakes, marshes, and ponds, which were surrounded by the grassy dunes, which attracted bison and other game animals. Indeed, the remains of bison at these sites are almost always found near water holes, indicating that the Folsom hunters may have hid in the tall grass and ambushed the bison when they came to drink. So a little bit about their hunting style. 
um, just kind of adds more to how archaeologists are discovering what these Folsom people were like. The tools found at the San Luis site are quite versatile. A single tool might have several edges, each with a different use depending on its angle and sharpness. For example, uh, blunt edges might be used to crack open bones and fluted scrapers might be used to work on animal hides. Um, this, like where it says, for example, that would be support for the argument that these, uh, these tools are quite versatile. Earth around which domestic activities took place. The Folsom Indians apparently did not dig deep fire pits, but rather shallow hearths. At the San Luis site, a thin layer of oxidized soil is all that remains of the fire site, the rest of it having been lost due to erosion and the churning effect of burrowing creatures such as spiders and mice. Okay, so again, just more characteristics about these Folsom people. Digging and collecting at the San Luis site have proceeded with some urgency since wind erosion is exposing and damaging many artifacts. Okay. Future excavations are planned for the regions surrounding the eroded site since they contain additional bison bones and may represent additional sites of ancient human activity. So kind of cycling through what the four corners method would cover and what you need to be paying attention to in a passage. Um, we have an immature main idea here. It's something along the lines of... Um, this San Luis site is helping archaeologists to uncover the lifestyle characteristics of Paleo-Indians, something like that. Um, arguments would probably be some of those characteristics that were mentioned. They were sectioned off pretty well as paragraphs, so definitely the one talking about how they didn't trade anything uh, with other tribes. Um, also, maybe um, the tool versatility. Um, their hunting techniques maybe would be an argument and probably this one because it was kind of a shift in like we were talking about their lifestyle their lifestyle and then it kind of shifted at the very end to talk about um the archaeologist kind of point of view i guess and, and said that they are proceeding with urgency because of wind erosion is taking away um, a lot of the site and that was what's so special about san louis is that it had the sand but obviously that's kind of playing like it's a pro, but it's also a con because it's eroding so quickly. So I would say that was probably an argument as well. The tone here, uh, the author seems almost I don't, like kind of intrigued, I guess, by this San Luis site. The way that he uh, said that it's urgent that we kind of excavate the San Luis site was, um, I don't know, the way he worded it, it, it made me almost feel... Like, I should be worried. Like, oh my God, we got to get these. We got to get these bones up. Let's go. Let's go. So I, I guess the tone would be kind of intrigued and kind of um, just interested in the site. By the time I got to the end of this passage, I would have taken 20 to 30 seconds, thought about it, stifled through all the details in the passage and extracted the most important messages to come up with a singular main idea. And to me, that main idea is... A quickly eroding San Luis site is helping archaeologists uncover the lifestyle of Paleo Indians like no trading, hunting techniques, and social life. So you can see how, kind of how my arguments came out. A quickly eroding San Luis site. That was an argument. Um, the lifestyle of Paleo Indians like no trading. That's an argument. Hunting technique. Argument. And social life. Argument. And straight into the questions. The first one says, why is the San Luis site being investigated urgently? So this should be fresh on your minds. Um, always think about it before you look at the answer choices. Always think about what do you want the answer choice to be? What is your answer to the question, not which one are you going to pick out of the multiple choice? So why is it being investigated urgently? It said in the last uh, paragraph there, that wind erosion is exposing and damaging many artifacts. And that is why um, the excavation has proceeded with urgency. So wind erosion. Let's see if that's an answer choice. A, artifacts are few in number. No. Uh, B, artifacts are being eroded by the wind. Yes. C, bison bones are few in number. No. And D, excessive ran rainfall is damaging the site. Um, so that would, I guess, if, if, there, if I had a 50-50, be that one. Um, but it's not rainfall that's eroding, it's wind. Number 14 says, according to the passage, which of the following activities was common to each band of Folsom Indians? So it talks a little bit about um, like Folsom Indians as a whole, not necessarily like the San Luis site. And when it did, it kind of said, 
um, that none of them really traded with each other and it talked about like how they hid in the tall grass to get the uh, bison that were at the water hole or whatever. Um, so I'm thinking something along those lines. Let's see um, what the answer choices say. A says cultivating a number of different crops. So I don't remember them specifically talking about crops in the passage. I know that it mentioned that these Folsom Indians or the Paleo Indians were like definitely hunters. Um, it didn't mention anything about like their agriculture, or their ga gathering tendencies. So I don't really like that one. B, eating a wide variety of wild game. So um, it mentioned bison and other game animals. Um, but you know, that could just be like one other game animal and I wouldn't call that like a wide variety. So, um, maybe I don't love it. I don't have like good passage evidence. I just maybe a little passage evidence. C interacting with other bands. So definitely not right. Like we, it was told in the passage that they don't interact with each other. D making tools out of nearby rocks. So that was mentioned as kind of a characteristic of all of them. It said that they didn't really migrate a lot. Like they just kind of made tools out of their nearby materials. So that's what the answer choice is referring to. And I like that one. So that one's the right answer. Number 15 says the passage suggests that the presence of human remains, tools, and animal bones at a single location means that. So this question reminds me of when they were talking about like the hearths and kind of where the domestic activities took place. They were kind of saying like, obviously all of them like congregated together. They probably ate there and sat around a fire pit and drank pale ales or whatever. So that's kind of what I'm looking for in the answer choices. Let's see if it says something like that. A, bison and other animals migrated from one place to another. Um, so animal bones, found at a singular location to me does not indicate that they are migrating. I think it would be like the opposite, like they're staying still, if anything. B, communal tasks were performed at the site. So that makes sense, right? Because communal tasks to me, that means like um, things for the community, like domestic activities. Um, so I, I like that answer choice. C, erosion has not yet occurred at the site. I mean, they could be like highly eroded human remains or animal bones. I like the answer choice B better because I think that goes along with what the passage was saying when they mentioned how human remains, tools, and animal bones were all found at a single location. Like that's the kind of idea that they were floating around is that domestic activities took place there. D, extensive interactions occurred among bands of paleo Indians. Why are they trying to like force feed this idea that there's interaction between the bands? There wasn't. Um, so B is the right answer. 16 says, assume that a new Folsom Hunter site has just been discovered in northern Texas. On the basis of the information contained in the passage, this site would most likely contain all of the following except. Okay, so it's an except question. So really what I'm going to look for is things that they would expect to be there, and then I'm going to mark those off. A, clusters of bones and tools. So yeah, they found that at, at like all those Folsom sites, right? So those would probably be there. B, human bones. Likely so, because humans lived there. They're going to die there. There's Their bones are going to be left there. So those would probably be expected to be there. C, remains of hearths. And so yeah, they talked extensively about the hearths and how, you know, they were shallow and there's not much evidence of them now, but that they are there. So probably would be there. D, tools made of Colorado Flint. So I don't think that there would be Colorado Flint in Northern Texas, cause that's pretty long way away. Um, they like to make tools out of nearby resources. So I don't think that those would be found in Northern Texas. 17 says, according to the passage, bands of paleo Indians did not trade with one another. That's true. What is the evidence for this statement? So let's go back up and see. If you didn't remember this already, I, I would ideally want you to just kind of remember this, um, but I want to prove that it's up there. So I'm gonna go back up. All right, so remember when we were talking about this paragraph right here and it said an important conclusion uh, is that they 
made tools out of material they gathered themselves and that there was little trading. Well, it kept talking about it, okay? So it said that the Sin Louis site has projectiles made from high quality flint, wood, quartzite, which are plentiful in the central and northern Rockies, which is where the Sin Louis site is. So the evidence here is going to be that, um, you know, the tools that they found at the area were from the nearby area. That's proof. A, tools of a band came only from local resources. Yeah, totally. B, tool shapes were unique to each band. Um, I don't know, that would be evidence to me that they didn't really trade, um, but th that was never said in the passage. C, food sources were unique to each band. Um, I don't think that that's true, because I think it talked about like bison and other game animals like kind of always being at these Folsom sites. If it is true, it was not stated in the passage, so I don't like that answer. D, each band had its own unique language and customs. Um, so even countries nowadays have their own unique language and customs and they still trade with each other. So to me that that doesn't, that's not evidence for the fact that they didn't trade with each other. Also, it didn't say it in the passage. So um, I like A the best. 18 says, given the information contained in the passage, if a large number of deer bones were discovered at the San Luis Valley site, the most likely explanation for their presence would be that the deer... So before going into this, you know, it mentioned how they kept finding bison bones and how bison was like a food source for them. So I'm thinking if there were deer bones there, they probably ate the deer, killed the deer for their resources or something. Um, so... A accidentally died at the scene and that would be <laughs> co very coincidental if a large number of deer d accidentally died at the scene um, it's not the most logical answer choice I don't think so B competed with bison for food um, so I don't think that the deer competing with the bison for food would mean that a large number of deer bones were discovered at the San Luis Valley site because wouldn't they just be like wherever the bison are like uh, like away from the site probably because the site is where the people are I would think that the deer and the bison would not want to be where the people are so they would be elsewhere if they were competed for bison for the same food then they would be where the bison are C migrated from another region so I don't know um you know I think deer can can be in the San Luis Valley. So far, none of these just, they just don't, re don't really make sense. D served as food for the Indians. Yeah, that, that makes sense. They probably killed those deer and ate them, and that's why a bunch of deer bones are found where the people were. I like D. 19 says, which of the following discoveries would most strengthen the hypothesis that Folsom hunters killed the bison they ate? Okay, the hypothesis here is that these hunters killed what they ate. They killed the bison that they ate. So I think it's just probably going to be like a logic and reasoning type of question. A, bone breaks consistent with the shapes of the Fulton, Folsom hunters pointed tools. So that definitely means that, you know, if there's bone breaks consistent with their tools, that obviously means like they're jabbing into these animals. I mean, they are hurting these animals themselves. That's pretty good evidence, I think. B, no evidence of an alternative animal food source. Um, so one, they could just be like vegetarians or whatever, or um, you know, they could just let these bison die and then kind of feed on their carcasses. That's kind of disgusting, but they don't. that doesn't mean that they have to kill them just because there's not another animal food source or no evidence for one. C, bison bones at a Folsom site. So I would agree that this means that they probably ate bison, but it doesn't mean that they killed the bison they ate. Again, they could just be feeding off a carcass. D, similar accumulation of bison bones at many Folsom sites. Again, it doesn't mean they killed them. I want something that says that they killed them. A is the best evidence that they actually did something that would kill a bison, which would be like stabbing it with a spear or whatever. I hope that breakdown helped you guys. Um, if you liked it, leave a comment. Let us know what you want to see next. But until next time.